Hey guys, what's up? This is Ben. Let's have fun, some fun today and just level up our conference cred by improving the level of our webcam and sound and overall feeling and turn this piece of crap looking webcam into something more decent and where I can show you just the step-by-step -step approach to my own setup. Here you can see I have my iPad in front of me and I can share with you what kind of camera I'm using, the lights that we are using here and here, the, and the microphone, and, and all that through several levels of upgrades. We're gonna talk camera, light, sound, background, and some magic. Because right now you're seeing this as a split screen and I wanna show you how you can do that as well, either as a shared screen or in a virtual cam. So what, where should we start with the camera? I think um, if you have a built-in camera, that is the level one. I was, will show you uh, three levels. Uh, to start with, it's, it's all right. But as you saw in the example I just showed you, the, the bad picture, that was my MacBook camera sitting in front of a white background with no uh, lights or any special sound devices. So, but built-in camera, it, it, it's fine for a start. But if you want to go to the next level, get yourself uh, a proper webcam. The ones that I'm currently uh, like to recommend is the Logitech C920 or the Logitech Brio. There are a couple of them. And if you don't want to get an extra device, like as a level 2.5, most of us have their best webcam already in their pocket. It's, it's our phones here. We have incredible cameras in our phones and apps like Epoch Cam just allow us to use those phones as a webcam. Absolutely fantastic. If you want to go one step beyond that, take a look at how to use your own maybe DSLR camera that you have for photography with good lens uh, to increase the picture. For example, I, I always get asked like, Ben, how do you do this blurriness thing? Is it software or is it hardware? You can see if I go closer that it, it becomes really very crisp and blurry. And even if I point my finger here, you can see that this is not just a normal webcam, but a proper DSLR camera uh, that had this kind of effect. The camera that I would get today for this would be the Sony 6400 and the Sigma 60mm 1.4. So a fast lens is helping you to get that blurriness and the Sony body just ensures that you have a very good camera that gives you a clean HDMI output that you can import to your computer through a video capture card. And I'm going to show you at the end the software that you need to make this really work. Uh, but this is this is what the end level can be. Yeah, and I'm, I've been using this setup now for I think almost two years um, and I'm really loving it. Um, We're getting a lot of compliments about yeah how, how clear and crisp the picture is. And since people kept on asking like, Ben, how do you do this? This is the video for it. Yeah, and I hope it's it's helpful for you. Of course, you can go with any other camera uh, that fulfills just the requirement of, of putting out a clean HDMI signal in a high quality uh, to your PC or MacBook. Now, that's the one part, the camera. But no camera in the world works if your light sucks. Um, light, light is really difficult. Let me just turn off my light, even with this proper camera setup, and you see how how bad the picture becomes. I mean, it's all right because the camera can compensate uh, because it has very high quality. But if you're using your normal webcam, for example, your built-in camera, you can improve the whole setup immensely by just figuring out your light right. And where's level one? Figure out where your window is, sit on the side or to the front of your window, make sure you get natural light on your face. Um, most often uh, during the day, this is the best light source, by far better than, than any additional lights that I'm going to show you in a second. Um, but maybe you want to have a meeting in the evening and you want to record content in the evening, then you need additional sources. So the first step would be to, to get a single light. It doesn't need to be a beauty ring light like this. It has the advantage of filling out your face from all sides on the other side, it, it, it is a very well-known look now, more in the beauty scene. You get like this catch, uh, this ring light. 
in your eye. It, it looks nice, but it looks maybe a bit a bit too much like the beauty queen. Yeah, if you want something a bit more natural, just get two lights, a key light, a fill light, uh, that lights the one side of your face a bit lighter than, than the other side. And that gives you a more natural look, like it, it's 10.30, it's completely dark outside, and this is a halfway decent uh, daylight look. Um, the, the lights I'm personally using is, are the Elgato Key Light Air, they're the smaller ones out of the two that are available. Check them out, but feel free to shop wherever you like, as always. Now, after you got some decent lights, you want to amp up your sound. Uh, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's really annoying uh, if there is bad audio in a conference and imagine you are a salesperson and your customer doesn't understand you properly or you're a leader and you need to convince your team. Um, if, if you have bad audio, that is almost worse than bad video. So the, the first level that we all gotta live with is the built-in mic uh, here as an example with the MacBook. It, it's all right, um, but even getting a little headset for you um, can help you. It can be like an over your head headset or you can put some, some AirPods in there. I got mine here for conferences. The advantages of headsets are definitely if you are sitting in a room with multiple people and you cannot share your audio loud. Um, but the disadvantage is that you got this, either you got this thing on your head all day, which would make me completely crazy, or you always have something in your ears with which might bother you. So this is why my chosen setup, level three, uh, consists out of a shotgun microphone that is sitting right here. If I tap on it, you can hear it. And it's just out of the frame so that you can't see it. And it gives me such a more clearer voice um, and better sound. And, and I can put up my speakers that I have down here um, on the side and, and they don't interfere. So I can sit here all day in meetings without ever putting anything in my ear and the other person on the other side really understanding me, me clearly. So I use the Rode VideoMic NTG. Uh, it has a USB connection, which was always a big plus for me because I just plug everything into my computer and let the computer handle the rest. I actually don't even feed it anymore into the camera. I'm not even having an SD card in my camera. So that is sound. And now there is a component that lots of people like to forget, like the, the background. It gives so much more, more flair to your uh, image than you might think. Uh, most people just sit in front of a white wall and think like that's that's the best there is or or they level up and they might get a virtual background. This is an advantage if you maybe do not sit in a room where you can control how orderly everything looks or you have a very small space, then virtual backgrounds are a nice upgrade over a simple white wall. But what I would suggest for level three is show some personality. Here I got my pirate skills poster up with our uh, saying purpose-driven growth. You can see the lamp, you can see the TV, some plans, a bit more atmosphere. You can show the books or the trophies um, that you want to share that are really important to you. Let some personality peek through. That can help transport your message uh, even better than, than a virtual background that always looks a bit kind of fake. So if you have the possibility, care about what's in your background, clean up and then go beyond that and, and let your interests and personalities shine through. And now for a little bit of magic sauce. Um, magic skills, since we are at pirate skills here, are a key component of what we do. We want to amaze people and we want to make sure that people remember what we are doing. So this is how I do all of the special stuff in my screen. I use a software called OBS. It's a free open source software that you can install on all devices, Windows, Mac, Linux. And what, what it does for us, it, it allows us to compose our layout how we like. It can change the colors of the picture. It can um, do filters on the sound to reduce the background noise or to improve the, the sound of your voice. Um, it, it can do so much stuff. It has become the de facto tool that all of the gamers uh, went to um, that are streaming on Twitch and YouTube Live. And 
since I'm all of those like 12 to 18 year olds figured this out, we as B2B people, we, we got to be able to figure this out. Don't be scared by it. It maybe takes a little bit of time to learn it, but I show some um, resources that I learned a lot from at the end. So OBS is the first thing that we need. And, and that helps us, that is now where all of the video, the audio, the, maybe the presentation that you can see on the side is being fed into. And this allows you, it doesn't do anything like right out the gate. This allows you to then choose your own webcam layout. You can now decide that on, on the right hand side, people can see your presentation or pictures or whatever you want to share on in the left hand side, they, they can see you. Like you can see me here right now. And you can choose whether to share the preview of the OBS output um, as, as your shared screen, or you can start like a virtual webcam. I'm gonna show you a little bit more uh, in a second. And then OBS allows you, if you go even more advanced, if you have a device with touch capability, for example, like an iPad or a Microsoft Studio um, pen, um, to do real time engaging stuff. Yeah, like writing something on the screen while you're talking. You, you have seen me do this during the very beginning. Yeah, when I, when I, when I draw my amazing beard here. Um, but, but you can do so much more. Let, let me just bring you a little bit into that OBS world so it's not that abstract. Okay, let me share. This is OBS. Of course, this is a bit meta with me in the picture and the picture and the picture, but uh, wait, yeah, here you can see what your users, the other people can, can see in, the, in, in your webcam or as your shared screen. And here on the lower end, you can see that you can compose scenes. Um, scenes are, for example, here my camera with my device uh, with the iPad that I'm sharing. This is what I showed you before. I can share with my browser, for example. I can share my camera big so you can get a bit more feeling of the room. Uh, I can share a browser in big and scroll here live through it. I can just share the iPad. I can um, share a browser on just one side, just the device or like the demo of OBS that I'm sharing. Just You can share everything. You can pretty much do anything in OBS that, that you like. And within those scenes, you have sources. Here, for example, we see the source um, OBS via display. So I'm sharing a part of my display on and put it on the left hand side. But if I want to change things like switch the positions yeah of my camera and and the browser when i can just do that yeah and i can put it on the left and the right hand side we can do this here in real time no problem and 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 this is this is what it does uh, for us and and to show you some a bit more fancy stuff let me share this with you so on here you can you can now see that, that my normal camera is looking like on any old webcam. But now watch this. How do I write in real time? You can you can see me writing, writing something. And, and this works by just using my iPad as an overlay and using a so-called color key um, to, to hide the, the background here and just leave the stuff that is not in that color on the screen. And I'm currently in, in Miro, on a Miro board. You can see this here. Yeah, this is the content marketing, uh, the content journey map. And, and I'm here in between. And you can imagine how you could use this to prepare some uh, meetings and already have like some, some post notes or, or like this um, prepared to, to moderate. And then you can, you can just pick up your notes and put them here on the side where, where you want them to show. Maybe as a reminder, you can you can edit um, the notes. You can, for example, pull them up, uh, get a little virtual um, keyboard and, and just change something here. And, and these capabilities, they are really, they amaze people. Yeah, and, and sometimes you want to get this. You want to get this for your content creation. You have to 
use it in a smart way in your conferences that is not confusing, of course, but that you can have so much fun with this stuff. And I just want to show you what's what's possible. Now let's go back and, and let's go back to the slides. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. That That is the whole enchilada. We now uh, showed you a path how to upgrade your camera, your light, your sound, your background, and how to put some magic sauce on it. And if you want to learn more about the magic sauce part, I've got two YouTube channel recommendations from whom I have learned a lot. Both Epos, uh, Epox Vox, uh, Epos Vox and Alpha Gaming are actually targeted towards gamers. And you will see that gamers have been doing this on a level so far beyond what I have shown you today for years and years, because they always needed to do this uh, in a live streaming environment. Yeah, and whatever works in live streaming also works in web conferences. So you can translate all of the learnings um, from, from that live stream world into webcam. And I also use this for content creation. For example, when I recently built the, the content journey map, I, I used this setup to, to explain how it works. And if you want to grab your own copy, just go to um, piratesguilds.com slash map. And this is where you can get your own copy of the content journey map to, to help you get more ideas how to structure your own organic content marketing. I hope this was fun to you. I, I love those kinds of topics. If you want me to talk more about this kind of stuff or if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm super excited to engage with you and to try what works in your situation and what doesn't. So hope you loved it and I would see you next time. Bye bye.